Welcome back to One Comic Book a Day, where we're covering Superman number 64 and the second story, The Isle of Giant Insects. So yes, it's a Superman story that is a basically a big B sci-fi horror movie from like the 50s, like them, essentially, which involves giant ants. And right now we're dealing with giant ants and some other giant insects, but mostly giant ants and arachnids. This is a Superman story that I do find fun. It's just once again, we fall under the mostly plot and not much anything with, say, characters or a real story. We essentially go, there are giant insects and Superman's going to punch his way through them until we get to the climax and we have to get to some sort of solution. There is no actual story leading up from the beginning to the end. So Lois has become queen of some sort of parade they're holding. While on an island some distance away, we don't know, a scientist has created a ray that makes insects grow. He didn't expect it to grow that much. So his ants become huge and they demand, because now they can talk, for him to increase it, all insects and they attack the city and they're going to conquer the world because ants are known for their conquering. It doesn't quite sound like ants, but sure, they're going to conquer the world. It gives us something Superman can punch. And I'll give this up to Superman. Superman has something that we could accept for him to kill, but he never actually kills any insects in the story. He just punches them really hard. But they take Lois and we just get the fun of Superman flying around punching some insects and riding an insect at one point. Nothing really deep. But with them having Lois, because she's a queen, ants love queens, they demand Superman to build a bigger magnifying glass. And you think this is going to lead to them being burnt alive by a giant magnifying glass, you're going to be disappointed. Or they'll kill Lois. This is to expand the giant ray to make more insects. But Superman, as He's sort of not really all that important to this story. He's made to build the giant magnifying glass and he's fighting his way to the insects. But other than that, people are still being attacked by the insects and Lois is still kidnapped. He's really here just to build the giant magnifying glass. He does actually make one choice or decision, but we're already at the climax and he wasn't doing that throughout the story. He outsmarts them by pointing the magnifying glass at prey mantises, their natural enemy. So I feel like he's fixed the problem by making a bigger problem. Anyway, the scientist is actually the hero of the story because he reverses the polarity of the ray like he's a 1970s Doctor Who. It's just easier to say, reverse the polarity. What does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything. It's techno babble we'll all accept. And everything goes back to normal, and Lois is now afraid of insects. Wait, was that the arc of Lois? To be kidnapped and now terrified of insects? Did she not like insects before? I'm putting way too much thought into the story. But I think we have two issues. That the story itself is just Superman punching things until we get to the end, which is the usual Golden Age Superman story. I don't have an issue with him punching things. I just want him to do a little bit more and there to be, you know, more conflict than just insects here. Punch them until things are solved. And two, he's not really all that important to the story. In a way, it possibly could have been solved without him, which is maybe a fundamental problem when your comic is called Superman. Okay, that is it from Superman number 64, The Isle of Giant Insects. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notification when new videos up. I do this Monday through Friday, but Friday is Bat Friday where I cover a Batman story on either Detective Comics or Batman. And until next time, let's ponder the question, whatever did happen to the man of tomorrow? And why would the ants make him grow giant spiders? That is a massive threat to them and everyone. Okay, have a great day.